everyone, and thank you so much for joining this webinar organized by Sample Assignment. Our services specialize in providing one-on-one -on -one sessions with experts, resume writing help, help in IELTS exam preparation, and LinkedIn profile optimization. This webinar has specifically been designed to help you understand, to help our students understand how SOPs are written. And this will be presented by our senior experts, Mr. Thiraj Gambhir and Mr. Siddharth Sagar. We thank you for joining us. Now, uh, this will last for 60, 60 minutes, this whole webinar. And the last 10 minutes would be a Q&A round where you can put forward your questions. You're most welcome to do that. Just in case you have any burning question right in between the webinar, you can just raise your hand and we'll address the same. Also, I request everyone to come on their video to make this session as interactive as possible. And uh, handing over to you, Mr. Siddharth Sagar and Mr. Dheeraj Kambir, without taking much time, we should begin this webinar. Uh, Mr. Gambhir, I would request you to please unmute yourself. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. This, uh, my name is Dheeraj. We'll be basically taking this uh, webinar to discuss about how to write effective winning SOPs, which can revive your college dream, which can make you get into your dream colleges, and thereby your dream careers. So I'm joined here with Mr. Siddharth Agar. I'm myself, I'm a content marketing uh, professional working for the last 10 to 12 years in the same industry. Mr. Siddharth is also a content strategist. We've been helping and guiding students for the last three years in writing SOPs for, for, for varied colleges in Canada, England, Australia, USA, some of the Ivy League colleges, helping them out with scholarship essays. And we would like to share some of our learning with you that we have acquired in the last three years. Right. So how do you write a winning SOP remains a very, very subjective question. Students often ask that why, since I'm submitting all education certificates, I'm submitting my CV, what is the need of an SOP? We're going to be discussing that, that what exactly is the need of an SOP? Why universities ask for a separate document known as statement of purpose what is the rationale behind this what is the objective behind this uh, right so over to Sudhat Sagar he will be uh, going through some of the crucial points some of the by book uh, methods of what universities look for in an SOP uh, what kind of uh, content should go into an, into an SOP and what is the basic structure of an SOP so this is something that Sudhat Sagar will go through and On the other side of this presentation, I'm going to come back again and share some of my and at the same time using some kind of content writing techniques that can make your SOP seem. better than others. So over to Siddharth Sagar. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gambhir. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm going to take you through module one, which will cover um, the very basics and the fundamentals of writing an SOP. So we'll, uh, we'll first talk about what is an SOP, and then we'll move over to, um, you know, going over the format and structure of writing the SOP. So I'm going to share my screen with you. We've prepared a presentation. So let's, uh, let's first recall what a statement of purpose is. A statement of purpose is a brief and a focused statement about one's uh, 
career and research goals. It's a vital document when you apply for admission to, to, to universities overseas, uh, you know, whether it's a professional program or a, um, or a, uh, let's say, maybe a professional program or a, um, yeah. So one, so often the SOP is also, you know, used to address the capability, the capabilities of the student uh, with respect to a couple of things. So, so these elements, they comprise of the critical thinking abilities, the analytic, analytical abilities, the interests and the aims of the uh, student. So if you want to write a good SOP, you need to communicate uh, with the with the admission committee, and you know, and most admission committees will look for a short and a crisp and and a ideologically written SOP. So now, let's move over to 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 the structure or how to format your SOP. So any any ideal SOP or a, or a standard SOP will have at least seven components. So the seven components are uh, the introduction or the anecdote, um, academic and professional background. Then uh, there's extracurricular activities or social work. Then comes the three most important sections. Why this course? Why now? Why this university? And future goals. So, uh, so uh, throughout the SOP, you need to be very much focused on uh, the future goals and uh, the the last section of the sop will be the, the conclusion so i'm going to quickly uh, you know describe and give you an overview of how to draft each of these components so starting with the introduction or the anecdote um, this is obviously the first paragraph of the sop or the first component of the sop and it should relate to an interesting story uh, it should be you know uh, it should be re relatively recent Maybe uh, some of your, maybe one of your personal experiences or a significant event that shows um, how your attention was directed towards this particular program. It should also briefly refer to your motivation, um, maybe you know your motivation, your unique ideas. So you may not need to describe them in detail, but uh, you just have to mention them uh, in 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 a couple of sentences and a couple of lines, just a hint of them. So that, and uh, and this and all this finally leads to to your program. Next, we have the academic and professional background. So the academic and professional background uh, will have up to three paragraphs. You you can also stretch them up to five paragraphs depending on your academic stint and professional stint. I'm not able to uh, share my screen. Yeah. Sorry about that. So the academic and professional background. So as I said that you can write up to three to five paragraphs depending on your academic stint and professional stint. So in all these three paragraphs, you will write about your motivation, um, the skills and the knowledge and the expertise in, in your field of work. Um, in, the, in the next couple of paragraphs, you should describe you should describe your undergraduate and professional experiences in a chrono, in a chronological manner. There we are. Right. OK, so we're on the third point. Um, all the practical experiences in the field should be described in detail, emphasizing your role, um, your contribution, and um, your contribution to the research, to the projects, to the internship, and your work experience. Uh, in this, in, in all these three paragraphs, you can also mention your uh, uh, some of the seminars or conferences, workshops, publications, and other examples of academic work that you have, um, you know, that you have participated in, and you can, you know, uh, describe them in in 
in, in a couple of sentences. It would also be helpful if you focused on how you solved the problems. Now, this section will, uh, this section is a part of the work experience. So um, it would be helpful, you know, if you, if you could focus on how you solved the problems, what challenges uh, you faced and what efforts um, you, you made while during the exposure you gained. And lastly, um, all these three paragraphs or the academic and professional work, professional background, uh, this, this narration should ultimately trace how your interest developed in your um, chosen field or program. Okay. Once you complete the academic and professional section, uh, you move over to, to writing the extracurricular activities and social work. So this is an additional information. Uh, the reason why this is additional because uh, this is something that you have that you have completed apart from your academic achievements. These are your non-academic achievements, right? Now, the extracurricular and the social work section um, have to be have to be only mentioned if if they are remarkable and you know uh, relevant so when 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 you're writing this this particular section you should also show how these activities have um, you know impacted your overall personality and the skills that you have developed during during those experiences uh, you may also mention how how your how your uh, previous um, uh, skills and the personality you have developed developed how will this help you in the future or uh, at the university? So I'll give you a quick example. Uh, let's take, you know, uh, if you're applying for management or let's say analytical analytics related programs, you may have to describe some of the leadership and mathematical, um, you know, capabilities that you have uh, developed uh, recently. So this can be either in academic or um, or non academic context such as um, um, you know leading curricular projects or organizing fests or pro workshops public uh, public speaking and etc so other few examples include uh, you may have participated in um, in in inter college competitions or you may you may have won a few inter, inter college competitions. You may have uh, you know started a you may have started a club or you know organized an activity or maybe launched a new business. So if necessary, uh, you may also include important personal experiences that have led to important um, you know decisions. And such information can be placed anywhere in this in this SOP. So now this particular section, the extracurricular activities and the social work, you may include this after writing your academic and professional background or after the future goals. Moving on, we have um, why this course, why now? So in this particular section, you need to be, you need to specifically mention about what you wish to study along with your um, interested topic areas within the field. So you can also specifically mention uh, the research areas that you wish to uh, you know, uh, indulge into and the skills that you, will, that you will acquire through the program. This paragraph, um, this paragraph should also say why you feel that now is the most ideal time to, to pursue your, uh, your chosen course. So whichever course you, you have chosen, whether, whether it is uh, the bachelor's course or the postgraduate course, uh, you need to, you need to um, specifically mention why this is the ideal time to, to, you know, um, to pursue and complete this particular program. And last but not least, um, you may, in one or two sentences, you may write why not earlier and why not later. Okay. Why this university? So no matter which university you have chosen, you have to 
uh, go through the web, go through the university website. Um, you know, especially the first page or the home page. You may also go through um, some of the student testimonials. Um, you may also go through the faculty, and you know, any additional information such as um, universities' collaboration with 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 with, with industries or you know, there's bottom of the pyramid projects, uh, cast on projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, when writing this section, you have to be very specific. You have to mention um, the most, only the most compelling reasons for choosing this particular university. You have to follow this by mentioning um, three to four subjects from the curriculum that are akin to the learning goals that you have completed um, uh, during your previous studies. You can also mention um, the names of maybe one or two professors which are which are currently teaching at, at the um, university and why do you want to learn from them? Why do you want to study this course from them? You may also have to talk about the um, ongoing projects, the research projects or the labs, um, clubs or the internships that the university offers. And how will all these help you in the future? So for each of these points, um, projects, research groups, labs, clubs, internship, campus activities, you have to uh, substantiate with, uh, with maybe one or two sentences, uh, writing about how these will help you um, in the future. Now, Coming to the most important part of this section, the most important part of the SOP, which is uh, the future goals or the purpose. So um, it would help you if you describe what you wish uh, to do with the degree. So um, this section will include um, two, two, two components. The first is the short term goal and the second is the long term goals. The short term goals are, are your, uh, your, 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 your career goals, which you will accomplish three to five years after completing this program. You can also mention the names of a few uh, companies where you wish to work at. Along with mentioning the, name, the names of the companies, uh, you can also mention um, the designation and describe the scope of work. Now, all these descriptions have to be very specific and you should clearly state the work, the areas of work, the industries, technologies, uh, subjects and the projects that you need that you have chosen. Uh, this leads to the long term goals, which is um, five years down the line after completing the program and after you achieve the short term goals. So the long term goal is that part of the uh, future goal section, which where you will describe where and what you want to work at. It should end with a description of the career vision and what impact you wish to, uh, what impact you, you want to visualize uh, yourself having on, having on the industry. So for any research related, related career goals, um, you should specifically mention a few topics, uh, methods, and the desired results you wish to achieve. So with this, we, we complete the future goals and the purpose, which is the most important part of the SOP. Now, coming to the last section of the SOP, which is the conclusion. Here, you will, you will recall why you are excited about the program and how you, you feel it will enrich your life and make you move towards your goals. You can also mention how uh, you will contribute to the, so, to, to the student community. So this can be done by explaining, um, um, you know, this can be done by explaining some of the um, um, experiences that you have gathered um, previously and some of the um, technical expertise you have gathered during, during your professional tent, uh, stint and how you will, um, you know, uh, help or share all these knowledge and skills with the student community. So with this, uh, I complete 
the module one, which was the overview of uh, of writing the SOP. Handing over to you, Mr. Dheeraj. Thanks, Siddharth. That was indeed very uh, enlightening. So, anyone, uh, any any questions, any any queries thus far? And also, like, uh, what, what kind of uh, things to you are expecting to learn from here? Any particular question that you have regarding any doubts that you're facing regarding an academic SOP? A statement of purpose for admission purposes? Right. So we'll 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 move on with with the with the module, right? We call this a, a guide for students, uh, SOP Writing 101. Can everybody read this clearly? Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. So Siddharth has given us a very, very good and a very comprehensive structure as to you know what needs to be in an SOP. We are, talk, we are going to talk about some of the methods that we use while writing an SOP, how has SOP evolved over the, over, the, over the time, what are admission committee looking for with respect uh, to your contributions, your potential contributions to the university, and how fairly can you perform as a student in that particular setting. Why this is important for international students? Because universities understand that you come from different cultural backgrounds, different socioeconomic backgrounds, your way of life may or may not be different from the from the target country that you're applying at so it's very important for universities to understand you as a person your personality your capability to collaborate and that is why uh, a sop is very important in most cases you will see that universities lay as much as 30 percent weightage to your sop document so some of the things that we need to stop doing is starting a SOP with a quotation. It was it was a good idea in 2001, but it's a very very bad idea in 2021. So if so, my recommendation is you don't start a quote with an you don't. Start your SOP with a quote unless and until you have solid recommendation come from that person. That person related. Am I audible to everyone? Yes. All right. So moving on. Most of the students that we guide, most of the students that we talk to, hmm. apply to multiple courses. Courses like computer science and data science are very popular as of today. Humanities, uh, international politics, and so on. A very common query that we receive is why does an admission committee need a statement, statement of purpose? You have to understand the objective of statement of purpose. You have to understand that in spite of you giving all the documents, all the information, and filling out multiple forms in your admission docket, how exactly is SOP different from the documents? And if in case you're giving all the information in, in, in a very comprehensive uh, documented docket, then what is the need of writing an SOP? And why so much wage is given to that? So in most cases, like I mentioned earlier, and like Siddharth emphasized on a lot of points uh, while writing your rationale to understand, uh, to, to, to define why you want to get into that university, why you want, want to get into that course, what are your social and extracurricular achievements, why, why this course will so specifically help you in achieving your future career goals. So in most cases, we feel that students are often emphasizing a lot on why me? Why should I get admission to this university? Why should I be able to undergo this master's? Why should I be able to undergo this advanced diploma? Why should I be apply? Why should I be admitted to a certain PhD program? <clears throat> but what we recommend, and when I say we, I mean 
collectively the brain hive of the experts at sample assignment. The, the approach that we recommend is why not you, right? The university has to have a certain student community and why not you will somehow take pardon from an elimination method when admission committee is reviewing, reviewing your application. So we recommend that you write an SOP wherein using a very strong rationale of why not you. We will discuss this for example going forward. So again, just to reiterate what Siddharth uh, very comprehensively pointed out is the basic structure of SOP. You start with your introduction, you give a very strong academic rationale. You tell about your education and your family, family background to give admission committee a glimpse into your life. How have you evolved as a student? How have you performed as a student? What are your extra and co-curricular participation, if any? What is your professional background? If you have some kind of work experience, internship experience, in most cases, you will see that undergraduates from India will have some internship experience. It is very important that you very effectively elucidate that industry experience in your SOP so as to the admission committee understands that you are well aware of the work patterns and the workflows in the corporate world. Of course, a very, very crucial point here in most cases, not in every case, but in most cases, you will see that the admission committee has a big question. The why are you not pursuing this course from your country? Why a foreign country? A very logical question because it doesn't make sense to go thousands of miles away just for educational purposes unless unless you have a very strong objective there, unless there is a course which is not out in your country, unless there is a certain research lab which is not available in your country. And those are very, very few cases. So you have to very be very, very uh, objective, rather subjective in telling the university committee, the dean of admissions, that why do you want to pursue from that particular country and why you, it, is, it, is, it is a better choice than your own domestic land of birth. Moving forward, the same kind of rationale applies to why college? Why do you want to get into that university? There are thousands of universities, a few hundred in your own country, a few hundred more in the country that you have chosen and elsewhere. So in most cases, you will see that starting active communication with college faculty, student groups will help you. This communication needs to be started prior to your admission process. So, so you have a clear idea as to what this university is all about, how students self work, what are the important clubs that you can contribute to and so on. And of course, the major two issues in an SOP remain that why course and why, what are your future goals? Why course meaning that how this particular course will complement your existing education, right? And if in case that course is not complementing your existing education, why do you want to diversify your education? And then the same rationale to be continued in terms of your future goals. What are your future goals? How will this, how will this course help you in your future goals? It is always recommended to use some kind of anecdotal uh, evidence here. So for example, if you're, if, you're, if you're a professional, you have to tell them that this particular course will help you in learning these particular skills, which will help you in gaining or removing the drudgery of uh, professional experience. It will help you in achieving your coveted professional profile in the shortest time possible. Right. How we recommend to uh, reflect this is in, in form of a certain genuine storyline where you disown the emotion right so why why we emphasize on I, I, I would like to kind of uh, talk about this in a detail that why we say that this own the emotion so it is important that we we, we talk about very practical thing with, with quantified data and at the same time 
don't show that you know we are just a lofty uh, passion driven scholar right so it's so instead of emotion you need to you need to describe your intent your diligence and at the same time your motivation to study that course how do you do that if you are somewhere between 25 maybe you know older if you are so passionate about becoming a, a data scientist if you are so passionate about uh, becoming a, a policy analyst if you are so passionate about and so driven to actually uh, become a business leader or project manager what have you done in the last 25 years that that means to be the most important question here. right so that is why we say that is own the emotion and present your motivation or objective with facts names places things that can actually testify to the work that you done till now testify to the motivation that you have and of course with a with a valid proof of concept is everybody clear what i'm what i'm really trying to uh, kind of specify here we have some new faces here uh, farha can you can you can you hear me do you agree with me is there anything that you would like to ask so raj would you like to add something here Oh, sorry. All right. Can continue. Moving on, uh, let's talk in a little detail about the things that we have discussed. Am I audible to everybody in this group? Am I audible to everybody in this group? Yes, sir. Yes, you are. So All right. So moving forward, let's talk in a bit detail about what Siddharth discussed. What is the, what exactly should be the plot of the story that you're writing as a statement of purpose? How do you reflect your entire life learning, your your movements, little things that you did to explore your passion, and so on? Some of the questions that you need to answer while doing so. Why do you want to pursue higher studies? what how exactly we will will these higher studies uh, affect you the very a very important point here while discussing uh, uh, international education is that we need to understand that most of the university that you will be applying to are basically research based universities very different from liberal education very different from the kind of uh, uh, pedagogy that we that you experience in india so you need to be aware of that particular uh, method of education system that is run in these countries and therefore give your rational and objective justifying that so what are your research objectives in what particular sub domain you want to excel these are things that will leave a mark on the admission committee of course why do you want to study this course how much and what kind of experience you have in your field how does your experience fit into your choice of field or the lab you want to work in most importantly how will you add value to the campus universities are looking for collaborative cordial people with good with good sense of academic diligence right people who can create value for the university that's how university rankings improve what is a university university is a collective of students a reputation of university depends on the student how students fare in and outside of the classroom is something what defines the ranking and the future of the university so it's very important that so that is the job of the admission committee to ensure that a very progressive pool of students join university every year 
university gives them a fair playing ground with all the infrastructure all the educational resources at hand and university expects expects you to add value to their academic legacy to add some kind of value to the overall reputation of the university so how are you going to do that how are you collaborative this is where so when we talk about social uh, extracurricular voluntary work internships so you need to be very clear clear while mentioning these particular skills about the life skills that you have learned while uh, during these endeavors right just to show that how collaborative you are if you if you have started clubs in your previous education if you have uh, participated in cultural events you have to be a bit specific about including the year names dates how many people attended what exactly was your contribution if you were setting a certain agenda how did you do that if you were setting a certain um, if you were, if you were running a certain event what are the what are the things that you manage what are the challenges that you faced so these kind of uh, content within your statement of purpose will give a very clear idea to admission committee that how exactly will you fit in into the campus so the keyword here is how exactly will you fit in into the campus considering that you come from a different culture different country different way of life so how exactly will you fit into this campus one more noteworthy thing here is that if you if you if you have already researched about that particular campus that you want to join and if if you feel that there is a lot of plural cultural diversity in that particular campus it is prudent to add that in your statement of purpose because you are going to be going, going to enhance that plurality you are going to enhance that diversity in the campus and of course with with one or two liner of how you're going to do that right coming back to academia uh, you need to mention if you have any specific research ideas today or for tomorrow right it could be it could be a certain idea that is growing in your mind for a while a certain a certain idea that you you developed while doing something while doing some kind of a certificate course while undergoing the curriculum of your previous education any idea that you may find unique and is yours it is always good to mention that specific research idea and complement it with the fact that how learning in that university will allow you to groom on that idea to work on that idea and to build upon that innovation that you have currently in your mind and eventually how studying at university and getting a msc phd degree will help you to achieve your goal so by goal we mean here a career goal and uh, a vocational goal how will this help in your career what kind of positions you'll be able to target at times universities will often uh, also uh, look for a certain statement that defines the ROI. University understands that it, when, you, when you choose to uh, undergo international uh, education, you are actually undergoing a very significant cost to your education. So it is only wise to justify that cost. What will be the ROI after doing that university? What kind of job roles will you be targeting? What kind of monetary package uh, you, uh, will you be targeting? Are there any particular fields, any particular companies that you're really keen on working with? Is there any particular industry that you want to uh, join? And why, how exactly do you transform that industry? Right. So very, a very, a very recent case wherein, wherein the, the the academic objective of the student was to understand the smart supply chain in terms of uh, data analytics and business analytics. And, it, and he had a very clear future goal. His future goal was to basically uh, subsidize the cost of the waterways between the East Asia and West. So this is what he wanted to work on. He wanted to work on a smart supply chain that could minimize the cost of transporting industrial and commercial goods between East Asia and Western countries. And he, were, and he was very clear about his idea. He gave a lot of a lot of detail into his statement of purpose you know as to what is the current scenario what are the current costs so these kind of objective details will leave will undoubtedly leave a very very uh, positive uh, impact on the admission committee because they know that you what you what you're talking about you're aware of your current of your of your of your about the domain that you want to study in you are very well aware of the academic discipline you want to get into and you have some very concrete future plans Right. So we'll talk about some of the methods. 
methods that can make your SOP stand out, make you know, winning SOP. It all comes down to writing skills. It all comes down to sentence construction skills, your competence with the language, the grammar, and the central core language here being English. So we are, we, so, so all the experts are sample assignment <clears throat> and we undergo <clears throat> regular training regarding this. We use, uh, so in a, in a scenario, like I would like everybody to visualize a scenario wherein if you were part of the admission committee, let's say at UT Texas, let's say at some uh, university in Victoria, Sydney, as part of the admission committee, as dean of the admission committee, as advisor of the admission committee, you will be receiving close to a few thousand applications per semester per admission season. From what I understand is that most of these inter international universities have two to three intakes uh, annually, starting from um, fall to spring to winter intake. These may differ from university to university, country to country. So it's exactly similar to when you apply for jobs. The HR receives an N X amount of CVs. And similarly, the admission committee receives thousands and thousands of applications. How do you make it stand out? If you if you're applying to America and Europe, then in most cases you will in most universities you will see where the where the where the scope of application is very high. So they have a they have a set process known as ATS, which is an automated filtration of SOPs, wherein a system, a bot, will filter out the SOPs first, and then only the selected SOPs after the ADS process will actually go down in hands of in critical hands of admission committee. Right. So if your SOP is not, if your SOP is run of the mill SOP, when I say run of the mill SOP, I don't mean that it's a bad SOP. It may be a good SOP. But you may have used very cliched methods to create an SOP, and your SOP is not even able to clear the first uh, filtration round, which is performed by machines. So there, your chances are nil. So unless and until your SOP is filtered out and finalized for a manual check, unless and until a human, uh, a learned human, uh, at, in the admission committee goes to your SOP, you have no chances of getting into that university, right? especially if it is a good ranking university. So that's why we use, uh, we, we leverage, uh, we, we recommend to leverage content writing skills. How exactly do you do that? Let's find out. Uh, the first paragraphs, the first few lines of your SOP are something that are going to make the biggest impact. Something, uh, you know, like a first impression. So we, so we strongly advise that the introduction of your SOP should act like a hook to the whole story. The introduction of SOP also can be termed as the academic rational. How do you make your academic rational to sound rational? This is something that we like to discuss here. Uh, over the two to three years of uh, guiding students of, for writing winning SOPs with sample assignment, I myself have personally gone through a lot of transformation, a lot of evolution while creating these uh, introductions and statement of purposes, right? So just mentioning a passion, an incident, an event, or just a zeal is not enough. So most of the cases when students are, ask me, uh, or maybe try to define their, the reason for learning that particular course. I have one answer for them, for them. That wanting does not get. Just because you want to learn something, that doesn't make you eligible to learn something. You have to go a bit, you have to delve deeper, you have to be a little more uh, comprehensive in terms of explaining your uh, want, explaining your dreams, and thereby explaining the skill set and the knowledge bank that you have created to enable that ease of learning. So I'd like to again say this word, enable and ease of learning.
would I, does anybody have any 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 questions regarding this particular phrase the ease of learning it's very important that you reflect this in your statement of purpose so and ease of learning would mean that you are well equipped to keep up with the course that you are so your voice is not audible applying to reason being that the university doesn't want students who would hold back the speed of the course module that they have planned out who would may hamper the speed of the entire class because the professor may want to keep everybody at same pace at the same learning level so right you guys hear me now right sorry for the interruption who oh, i'm audible to everybody now yes yes sir thank you all right so like i was saying that uh, the very important uh, very important point to include in your sop is to actually convince the admission committee about that your skill set your knowledge bank acquired to the date of you are applying to the admission will enable an ease of learning while you are at the college the reason being that you will not hold back the entire class reason being that you will not be an odd one out in the class or you will somehow affect the pace of the course modules that the university has already planned right every university has a syllabus they have a certain course module that they want to stick to at a certain speed which is also known as uh, credit hours in the international university so credit hours meaning the hours of amount uh, the amount of hours you will undergo classroom learning right so it is student only that you are able to kind of define and explain your your skills which will enable an ease of learning right within the introduction so you have very clearly defined reason why you want to uh, why you want to uh, undertake that particular study program what is your zeal what have you learned in the past few years just because you want to do something you are dreaming of something is not enough right Uh, what are your achievements so very shortly in a line or two uh, you have to uh, basically tell them about your education profession any particular achievements in terms of merit scholarships in terms of being a finalist in a hackathon uh, in terms of being a finalist in some extempore any anything that can basically uh, reflect that you have been academically active academically um, gifted for that matter and somebody who is at ease when acquiring new knowledge very important point here is proof of concept who else agrees so when you when you tell them a certain incident of where you were a finalist or a certain incident where you got a special mention or a certain research paper that you got published it gives you a valid proof of concept it gives a valid proof of concept to your learning that because you got an award because you got an award during internship or during work or because you got a merit scholarship or because your research got published there is a valid proof of concept that you know what you're talking about again uh, it's almost the statement of purpose is a 30% of your experience of your evolution as a scholar of your evolution as a person who you are really what are your ethical methods to learn new knowledge during school during college during undergraduate and then complement your rational with solid facts names places things dates so that they have a visualization of what you're talking about so when we talking about a hook or an academic rational that we are basically writing to impact um, to leave a positive impact there is a certain example i'd like to show here <clears throat> so this is a, a true story uh, of a, of a very passionate student nothing wrong in both examples uh, 
whereas the evaluation of these these examples i will leave it up to you what i'm going to show here is my take so this particular student wanted to undergo flight training in one of uh, the premier institutes uh, flight training academies in canada in the toronto region and this is what he came up with the sob that he had prepared which had come to us for evaluation was started something like this i want to be a pilot because as a kid i was mesmerized with kites i always wanted to fly in the sky and thus want to apply at a prestigious pilot training academy i have a good understanding of physics and mathematics and i'm physically capable of being trained as a dependable pilot therefore i request you to accept my admission application at your prestigious pilot training academy nothing wrong in it uh, a very genuine passion and because i personally spoke to the student i can testify to the fact that he was genuinely passionate about flying as an as, as some as somebody who's fresh out of post secondary education his understanding was 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 good enough as far as the related physics and mathematics required for uh, a flight um, study program so for for those of us who are not aware uh, a flight program would first uh, would is actually a series of trainings so, so nobody gives you a, a commercial pilot license straight away so you get you get a trainee license and then you go through under then you undergo some more few hours of of of, of on flight experience and then eventually after a lot of uh, uh, training and different kind of licenses you are eventually Uh, certified and licensed as a as a as a, as a commercial or 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 uh, a non civil uh, pilot license in in both cases you have to undergo pretty prolonged training of uh, in flight experience so like i said true story this person was the scholar was very much passionate about everything that he was talking about but like i said the core skill here is writing you may be very good with physics you may be very good with your management concepts your humanities concepts any kind of engineering concepts mechanical civil architecture you could be one of the best operators of uh, of software tools or you could be one of the best coders in the world that does not determine the fact that you are also a good writer writing is a different skill so that is why write a sample assignment do help these hundreds of students every year with their core competence which is which is writing writing in english language so this is what we suggested him we we suggested him a certain intro that he agreed uh, on uh, representing and just for everybody's information his application was accepted So this is what our intro uh, that people in my circle of acquaintance will readily justify for my passion for flying. Even as a kid, I was utterly enchanted about the idea of gliding on top of the world, will collecting scale models of famous flight machines. My prized possession being a vintage Ward F4U Corsair model. The innate ambition took an academic turn with ample encouragement from a lettered father, and I have since accrued rudimentary understanding of flight sciences. With age, I have understood the crucial responsibility of being a commercial airlines pilot. and i have ensured that my physical strength complements my life goals therefore with parents i want to gain flying expertise at your much acclaimed universities owing to your enviable reputation as a top pilot training academy in north america right so so this is just one example we do this multiple times every single day you know so uh, so we have we have people who want to learn robotics because they got some kind of robot as a gift when they were 9 years old um we got people who want to who want to become a pilot because they're fascinated by kites uh we get i mean it's uncanny but we do get uh, students who want to learn international politics because their father is a politician and so on <coughs> universities are looking something very very different in terms of uh, so i like to call it a typical uh objective a typical rational something which uh, which which is not so simplistic 
in, in so, so you know just because your father is politician doesn't give you a right to study international politics at the top university in the world you have to you have to describe it that you know how exactly will you learn there what exactly are you going to do with that education there and so on so this is just one of the examples uh, that we have used as to how we treat introductions. At the same time, our major emphasis remains on quantifying your statements. I can write anything uh, in on, on, on a piece of paper. Nobody is holding my hands. I can I can I can probably research and and, and write about a, a theorem on tachyons, you know, copy pasting formulas of the internet. And telling them maybe that I'm the one who's going to prove the theory of Einstein wrong. Nobody's stopping you. That's that's the kind of flight a writer has. That's the kind of liberty a writer has. But this is an academic document. You need to understand that every single uh, piece of knowledge that you share, every, every single piece of uh, claim that you make in your SOP needs to be quantified. Solid facts, names, places, things, and dates. I'd, I'd just like to cut in between. Uh, Mr. Gambir, we're very grateful that you've taken uh, your precious time out for this session. Just that uh, the webinar is reaching towards its end. And it, it'd be great if we can just keep uh, the last three minutes of this session as a Q&A round. And if anyone has any query, absolutely, uh, we'll be very grateful if you could you know, address the same, if, if, our, if any one of our participants has any question. All right. So I was under the impression that we have additional 10 minutes for Q&A. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just quickly uh, go through uh, the, the slides without much of explanation, and then we can start the Q&A. All right. No worries. Right. So uh, we, we recommend that you quantify your statements with facts. We will be sharing this file with you so that you can actually go through the entire file and you know, always you can come back to us with questions. Why SOP is important? Why do you need to sell yourself? How specific you should be while writing an SOP? You know, avoid giving redundant information. And finally, we recommend that uh, evaluation, re-evaluation, third, third opinions, uh, additional opinions through friends, peers, mentors is very important. And of course, multiple proofreadings. Unless and until you feel that the document is perfect, as for your understanding, take your time before submitting it. Yeah. Right, Aisha. We can we can go through with the Q and A round. Penny. Yes, Budhir sir. Uh, Mr. Budhir, would you like to put forward any question? Yes, here's my question. Thank you. So uh, I like to, I like to ask, and I'm presuming that universities do not give a um, reason or a feedback if the SOP is not well written. So as a student, uh, where can I get? Uh, where can I go to get a review on my SOP? Because there's no formal training per se available for uh, SOP writing. So where must I go to get a review? Or how can I be sure that my uh, my SOP that I've prepared for, for the admission is good enough to be accepted? How can I be sure as a student is what I like to know. Right. So it's true that universities often don't give a, a detailed uh, uh, you know, reason of why your application was rejected. And most universities follow that particular process. That is why we that is why we have gone through this entire, you know, module one and module two, to to be for, for students to be able to understand what exactly they should be writing in an SOP, right? So the only chance that you have of making this a success is to ensuring that you have followed a, you have followed the university guidelines, if any. Most of the universities will give you guidelines. Some of the universities are even expecting video uh, statement of purposes now, which we also help out students with. Most of the students, some, some universities, especially in management courses, uh, specific management courses like international business relations and so on, would ask you a certain set of questions. They will give you a certain set of questions to write essays on with a very strict word count because you are uh, you are only allowed to submit these essays online so you don't have any scope of including even one single word because that particular window will only accept that many words right 
before you submit the sop we highly recommend that you that you that you get it evaluated from an experienced mentor such as sample assignment or anybody else that you trust yes so sir you, yeah yeah i have a question like uh, obviously we can tell about the academic uh, prof and professional qualification of ours but the sop that we are sending into a particular country the thought process of the interviewers are also developed according to the culture of that country so we have not been there so how to match our sops in accordance with the thought process of the person about i mean where the country we have not gone we ourselves don't know so how to convince them that yes you know we are uh, you know eligible to survive in this kind of a culture yeah. right so uh, I'd like to answer this question in two parts. Uh, uh, let me first just uh, conclude with uh, Budesh Sir's query, which is uh, the only uh, the only uh, foolproof way. I wouldn't say proof foolproof. The best possible, but the best available method to you be, uh, before you submit an SOP and to ensure that your SOP is effective, a winning SOP is to get it evaluated from an experienced person, mentor, peer, or or somebody. Uh, or, or a trusted academic pool like sample assignment because universities will not give you uh, a detailed uh, rationale of why your application was rejected right. so lida i'd like to answer your question in in in, in two parts so it's firstly person, education yeah. education doesn't have a religion culture citizenship uh, one plus one equals to two in india one plus one equals to two in america and, and so on even with higher education it's evidence-based learning. So as long as you are able to justify your academic prowess, as long as you are able to justify that you uh, are uh, mighty eligible to complement the course that you're applying for. Uh, so for example, if I have, if I have three, uh, three ERs in my engineering education in India, and now I'm applying at MIT, obviously MIT will reject my, I mean, my application unless and until I have some very specific research uh, goal that can only be achieved in an MIT and, and then again I have some valid proof of concept in my past academia to, 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 to define that. So as far as your academic qualifications are concerned, as far as your academic eligibility is concerned, you need to uh, kind of uh, describe it with a very quantified uh, you know, set of details as to, so normally we recommend is that when you're, when you're explaining your academic qualifications, you go back to at least your three to four last academic qualification. So for example, if you're applying for masters, starting from high school to intermediate to what you did in your undergraduate and defining the entire, uh, you know, scope of learning during these uh, scholarly years would, would work in your favor. Uh, the second part of the answer would be you're, you're, you're basically talking about coming from a different culture. How will you fit into that particular culture and so on? So for this, the, the most primary point here is the medium of language, right? You're going to be doing, going to an international university where English is the first language from a country where English is the second language. So for that, universities have set parameters of, uh, of, of some exam scores like TOEFL, IELTS, uh, Duolingo uh, exam where universities will demand a certain score. So for example, if you're going to Canada, your, uh, your minimum uh, qualification to uh, apply at a Canadian university would be a 6.5 overall band score in IELTS. If you have anything below 6.5, most universities will reject you, uh, barring a few liberal education universities. Uh, and as, of course, uh, the more the higher your score is, the better your probability to get into your admission. So, for example, if you have 7.5 in your IELTS, it really uh, gives a good impression in your SOP and your chances of getting admission in that university. Uh, why we mention uh, to to add extracurricular, social, voluntarily uh, uh, participations, collaborative part participations. Why we emphasize on uh, adding. Uh, you know, in detail about the kind of experiences you had while at college, while at work as a person, what you learned from that is because uh, the, it's, it's for the very point that you need to describe in your SOP that you are a collaborative person and you are uh, flexible enough to work with people, to work in a different culture. Most of the universities, international universities, you will find a very strong pool of international students. 
so uh, your cultural uh, difference which you're calling your cultural difference is actually a plus point for you because universities are also looking for that kind of uh, socio economic diversity in their student community thank you sir any queries from anybody else any questions So, Mr. Dhiraj, would it be right to say that SOP document or SOP is a formal document of writing and it can it be compared to a resume? Because resume, we understand that a resume is a formal piece of writing that we present to our potential employers. Can can a SOP be compared to uh, a resume in the sense that does it constitute does it does it count in as a as a formal piece of writing or can it be uh, informal as well. Right. Uh, so a very, very common query. I'd like to just show one slide in order to uh, justify that query of yours. Right. <clears throat> so why SOP is so important? I mentioned this earlier also that we are giving CVs, academic certificates, right from middle school to, to undergraduate, all education certificates are there, all work experience certificates are there. Our resume is part of the admission docket, even if you don't have any experience. Uh, so in, your, in Europe, uh, you, will, you will see that universities ask for something known as Europass CV. Uh, <clears throat> in Canada and Australia, you will, you will find that they, they, they ask you for uh, undergraduate CV, which is similar to Europass CV, because you don't have any professional experience, you, don't have, you only have internship experience. So let us let us understand it from an HR point of view, because now you have we have uh, uh, now you have you have uh, created an analogy of uh, resume versus SOP, right? So so assume that you are an, you are a hiring manager. You have advertised openings and mentioned the minimum requirements to be qualified for the submission. You know that if someone meets the minimum requirements, you can always teach him or the required skills for accomplishing all the tasks of your upcoming project. Once all the prospective students submitted their applications, you could probably select the top 10 candidates by just going through their academic performance, previous work experience, skills, etc. But you decide to talk to them in front, face to face in form of an interview, right? So this is what exactly, uh, this is exactly the purpose of SOP solves. So it is equivalent uh, to uh, a face-to-face -face interview that you uh, have to uh, undergo after submitting a resume. So your resume is basically just a chronolog uh, chronological document of your education, your curricular, extracurricular sports, and your professional work experience. In a two-page document, you can maximum give out some bullet points describing your technical practice, describing your, uh, you know, the, the KRAs, KPIs that you have actually undergone and so on. SOP is very different from that. In fact, we, we, highly, we highly recommend that you do not uh, repeat things that you have already uh, kind of mentioned in your CV. SOP is more of a reflection of your personality as a scholar, your evolution that you have undergone over the last 20 years of your education, and a very, very clear uh, a definition of what you want to do in the next 10 years of your life. So essentially, this is what SOP should do with a very effective, genuine, real, true storyline without any lofty ideas, without any uh, overcommitted, uh, uh, you know, statements, wherein what you have done in the last 20 years and where you see yourself in 10 years. So very different from resume as far as that is concerned. Thank you, resume and SOP David. are completely exactly opposite of each other. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this highly informative session by uh, Mr. Dheeraj Gambhir and by Mr. Siddharth Sagar. We're very grateful. 
if you'd if any one of you'd like a one-on-one -on -one session with our experts you can book one just simply visit our website www.sampleassignment.com or write to us on info at the rate .com. Thank you everyone who joined and I hope you have a great one ahead. Thank you so much.